Hi, it's Adam, and we are at the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois, answering your questions that were posted at heartvalveblog.com. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Ron Salinger, who's the director of valve surgery at Good Samaritan Hospital in Suffern, New York. We have a question, um, Dr. Salinger, from Emily Ray, and she writes in, I'm a healthy person, I'm 68 years old, I just had a successful mitral valve repair. I'm curious to know, is there anything I can do to ensure that this repair will, ra will la last the rest of my life? Well, Adam, first of all, thanks for having me and be a, letting me be a part of this. Uh, I, we get that question a lot from people who've had uh, successful surgery, both from valve repair patients as well as valve replacement patients. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of valve surgery, but in very broad terms, you can categorize it as either repair or replacement. Uh, there's some similarities and a few differences in, in what you should look for postoperatively. And there's also, this is an area of intense study that as surgeons we're particularly interested in and cardiologists, and uh, there's a lot of unknown in this area. So there are things that we think may help. There's not a lot that's proven to help. Mm -hmm. The number one thing that we know has a huge impact on the durability of your repair or replacement is a good technical operation. Mm. So a lot of the advice that you give people about how to choose a surgeon and, and researching the operation that they're, they're going to have will have a big impact on how long their valve or replacement or repair lasts. We know that's critical, but there's also other factors unique to the patient that influence how long a replacement or a repair will last. Um, for replacements, for example, age is a big factor. Mm -hmm. We know that a valve prosthesis will last longer in older patients than in younger patients. And we think that has something to do with the hemodynamics in younger patients and the greater stress that's placed on the valves. Uh, some other areas, I broke it down into about five areas that I think can affect post-operative longevity. Uh, the first two being good technical operation, the second one being age. Uh, the third one is a bit of a question mark, but there's some evidence that particularly for when you're putting a valve prosthesis into somebody, that how calcified their native valve was may affect the long term, how long their valve prosthesis will last, and there's some data. Not to interrupt you, by native valve, you're talking about the, the patient's original valve. Their own valve, right. So if it was very diseased and calcified at the time of operation, there are some studies such to suggest that they may calcify their new valve mm -hmm. more quickly. Uh, there's also some very exciting research being done about the genetics of valve disease in general, and this is an area that, as physicians, we don't completely understand, but we're trying to understand better. Uh, there's some exciting publications from the University of Pennsylvania about valve endothelium and how that affects the early stages of valve disease. And that may have implications for how we treat valves that we put in patients and also for how we treat patients in the early stages of valve disease to avoid surgery altogether. Mm. And that's a very exciting area. And one of the things we've learned so far is that particularly for patients with aortic stenosis, there's some overlap in the disease process at the cell cellular level early on. Mm. And uh, there may be some similarities between the diseases of aortic stenosis and coronary artery disease. Mm. Uh, so if we can identify those genetic factors and then try to modify those, that may help us treat patients better. The fifth thing I thought about are things that probably gets more to the heart of the question that um, your patient and a lot of my patients are asking, which is what can I do after I've had a good operation to try to maximize my benefit? And this is really an area that we don't have concrete things to tell patients, but we know things that can influence the heart in general and uh, things that are, are healthy anyway that may influence the longevity uh, of your repair or replacement. The first thing to understand is how do repairs fail? Now, there's two broad categories why repairs usually fail, either a breakdown of the valve repair itself or progression of the disease in the heart, which can be either progression of disease in the heart itself, which can mean 
changing, basically means a changing in the size of the heart that affects the valve, or disease in the valve itself. And this would have to do with the process that caused the valve to degenerate in the first place. Mm -hmm. For valve replacements, the most common reason that these fail is degeneration of the prosthesis that's put in place. Mm -hmm. And in particular, I'm talking about when we use tissue valves, because for metal valves, it's a whole different mm -hmm. story. Those do not degenerate. Um, now, if you're a patient and you want to keep yourself healthy, uh, basically, if you could keep the heart healthy as far as size and function, you're going to maximize your outcome of your heart surgery and your valve surgery. The number one thing to do as a patient is to see your cardiologist regularly and get echocardiograms at regular intervals. Echocardiograms and ultrasound, which looks at the heart. And you need to also ask your physician about the echocardiogram. Don't just get it and assume everything's fine. I would get the echocardiogram and ask your physician just a couple of simple questions. Ask them, is the heart size stable? Is the function stable? Is it improving after heart surgery? And particularly for aortic stenosis patients, you may want to ask about the thickness of the heart. Uh, this is a good thing to do because it helps you know if you're making progress. And if you're not making progress, is there something that can be done? For example, optimizing your medical regimen. Even though you've had surgery, the disease hasn't necessarily been cured, and there's still an impact that medication can have in the future. And sometimes for physicians and patients, there's a tendency if the patient feels well, not to change anything. And to some extent, that's a good idea, but sometimes you can really optimize people's medical regimen. And even though they feel well, they may benefit from either a new medication that's been found to help or an increasing dose of the medication that they're on. And this is something you may have to push your physician on and ask them, should my medications be changed? Should my doses be changed? And you can use that question in conjunction with the results of your echocardiogram to decide if you are making progress or maintaining the benefit of your valve repair. Now, one example of that is blood pressure control. Overall in the country, only about half the people that have high blood pressure even know about it. And high blood pressure is one of the most modifiable, strongly linked associations to cardiovascular disease. So only half people know they even have high blood pressure. And of the people that know they have high blood pressure, only about half are adequately controlled. Wow. So that's an example of something that's relatively simple that can be uh, very effectively treated with medication changes. Um, Another, there are other medications that are being investigated to see if they help prolong the life of, particularly of, uh, of valves that have been replaced. These are things uh, such as cholesterol lowering drugs, particularly things called statins, mm -hmm. and other agents that are used after stents, such as dual, what we call dual antiplatelet therapy, or things that inhibit platelet aggregation on the surface of the valve. We don't have enough information yet to say if they're helpful, but those are areas of active investigation. Another thing you can do as a patient to kind of maintain and improve the health of your heart is to not smoke. It sounds obvious, but you know many patients who end up having heart surgery have smoked in the past, and a lot of patients quit, but not everybody does. And it's just critical to quit smoking, even though very difficult to do. It's critically important to your future health. Other things that you can do is control your weight. This will put less strain on your heart in general and most likely put less strain on the function of your valve repair or your valve replacement. And part of this is eating a well-balanced diet and getting moderate exercise. Uh, recommended exercise is about 30 minutes a day, five times a week. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be a marathon runner, as long as you're moving. You can just walk your dog or walk with friends or just keep moving for 30 minutes about five times a week. And there have been studies that show that people that exercise regularly, even at that moderate level, it, it, over a long period of time, maintain better tissue integrity than, mm. than patients who have a sedentary lifestyle. Again, this is an area that we don't completely understand. but it can help you maintain your health overall and your heart health very well. Uh, and then I think the final thing to keep in mind is more for replacements 
is to maintain good dentition because the, having uh, infections in your mouth and having to deal with that can affect a valve and that can be a, a problematic situation. Great. Well, Dr. Salinger, thanks so much for taking the time to think about Emily Ray's question and really give us um, a good dose, if you will, of great counsel and advice. I hope that helped the patients and caregivers out there. Again, this is Dr. Ron Salinger, the Director of Valve Surgery at Good Samaritan Hospital in Suffern, New York. Thanks so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Adam. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life you were only waiting for this moment to arrive.